which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are said? Then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the, the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And they said to, to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to condemn to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel. And it's already the third day that this happened. Amen? The church may be seated. Brethren, we have a church as a mission, with, as a church. And this mission is to spread the, the word of the gospel. Bigger than that is to proclaim, proclaim the salvation in Jesus. Because this is the only way for man to transpose and to find eternal life in the presence of God. So we always, in our messages, in our meetings, everything we do as a church, faithful church, our main target is to present Jesus to the mankind. We have no other interest. Materialistical, financial, we have no other interest than to have you having the opportunity to experience the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit you keep this mark in your life. Unfortunately, many are avoiding this experience. This passage is very known in the gospel community. And every time we read and we go to the details and we study, go over every detail, every, even though the history per se, we find something new. And we will see how rich is this message. As more as you have read 30, 50, 100 times, every time you study this experience of these two disciples in the way to Emmaus, you're going to see how God shows us something new. It's an experience that marked the life of these two men. I, myself particularly, I think this text very sad because it presents the reality of many. The story of these two men show us what we have inside some churches. These two men, they lived with Jesus at least three years or maximum three years. They watched Jesus. They watched the operation of Jesus. Powerful prophet in work, in deeds before God and the people. That means 
that they have experienced close the uh, close moments with Jesus. But why do I say that it's sad? Because these men, even though they lived with Jesus, walked with Jesus in the moment of trial and struggles, in the moment of doubt, they just abandoned Jesus and they left frustrated. I, I thought he would be the one that would deliver us from Roman doing something for Israel. So this story is a story of many among us. People that are conviving with Jesus per se, carrying Bibles with themselves. People that sing gospel songs People that go to churches and in the moment for a little circumstances like a financial struggling, so family mayhem, a crisis within family or in the work, anything make the man to leave Jesus. I didn't wait for that. I am by myself because God had abandoned me. People that live in the gospel environment but deny Jesus, void Jesus with words, attitudes, and they justify themselves. He deserved it. He deserved that. He had a problem. Well done. He deserved it. People that are in this spiritual environment, seeing miracles, adoration, listening to messages, watching the Holy Spirit operating among them, seeing the Holy Spirit transforming and bringing new lives to be transformed and to fill these benches for a little thing they abandon the gospel that's why I say particularly it's a sad story the beginning of it right but then we understand the reason that God the Father sent His Son Jesus. Jesus here present Himself to them. They didn't recognize first. So three days ago, or maybe a week, they were seeing Jesus personally. And Jesus was in Jerusalem. It was a Passover. Jesus was in Jerusalem. He entered for the last time in the city. He was seen by everybody. And there was a call to all of them to be in Jerusalem because of the feast. And now what was prophesied, which was the death of Jesus, these two men now leave everything, ignore everything, the commandments, the call, the prophecy, and everything that God has shown to them through Jesus, that they should, should be in Jerusalem until from up high to receive, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. They simply left. He went to Amos, which was apart from Jerusalem. And the same day now, the same day that Jesus resurrected, these two was on the way and they didn't expect it. The Bible says that the ladies went to the to the grave and they were the one that
mention that he was resurrected. And even though they listened that from the ladies, from the sisters, they left. They abandoned. So Jesus was walking with them and they did not they did not recognize it. Him. This is sad. And this is the situation of many. There are having this contact with the gospel, spiritual environment, but for a little or anything, Jesus is second plan. I need to take care of my things, my personal life. My husband cannot be by himself a certain day, so I need to be with him, poor man. People say that anything, it's a reason to put your spiritual life, your experience in second plan. Doesn't need many things. Something important. Very little. It's a reason for you to open hand of what God has called you or given you. You're called to be in the presence of the Lord, to serve Him, to be in fellowship with Him, to be living and walking with Jesus. People deny for little things, almost nothing. So now Jesus go to their encounter. Still have opportunity. The man is target of the action and the operation of the Holy Spirit. To him, to mankind, is given a, cho a chance to adjust and to approach and to give importance to what he's living in the presence of the Lord. So, my brother, my sister, you came tonight that this service can be opportunity for that. So you can put in the first plan in your life, not your commitment because you are a member of a church. No, that's not what we're talking about. It's the fact that you have an experience with God. Did you have an experience? Do not let this for, be forsaken or forget, forgot. If you listen to a call from God, not from a pastor or a leader or of this church or any other church, if you had an experience that uh, was remarkable to your life, as these two disciples, you need to do today, in the name of Jesus, you need to seek for a renewal, a revival in your spiritual life. You cannot let these things of this world, the tiredness, the, the humanly projects, interrupt your relationship with God. The Bible says to the disciples, right? What a disciple means. What is the definition of a disciple? It's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a student. What is an apostle? We don't need to go too deep, but let's analyze this. Disciple is the one that listen, that see the examples and follow. An apostle is the one that is responsible to keep and to spread the teachings of the gospel. Whatever he receives from God. And the Bible talks about disciples, apostles, and multitude. We see that in the ministry of Jesus, we see always in Acts of the apostles. What 
What was the biggest group? Disciples, apostles or multitude? The multitude. Disciples will be the second or the first. There was more disciples or more apostles? More disciples. How many disciples that the Lord called and turned into apostles? Twelve, right? So we see as more, as closer you were from Jesus, more chances for you to listen to the voice of the Lord. As far as you from God, more difficult to listen to the voice of Jesus and to follow Jesus. Jesus says that. Jesus said that. The multitude, I speak in parables. So they, they're not going to understand. But to the disciples, to the apostles, how, uh, he, he gave a better, understa better understanding. After the multitude left, he go over and he was more deeply in the teachings. We need to be as close as possible from God. So if you do, if you draw a line here, God, the apostles, the disi disciples, and the multitude, there's a decreasing order. The disciples were the ones that followed Jesus. the ones that had the mission to spread the gospel. To follow Jesus is diff different than to be apostle. That's why we need to fight, we need to struggle and, and strive and to be bold to talk about the gospel of Jesus. That's why many churches don't talk much about the second coming of Jesus. So they, they rather speak about them. So Jesus said to them, Stay in Jerusalem until from, from heaven you receive the power. Power for what? To speed fire? To martial movements? No. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And this power was poured out uh, described in the book of Acts upon this small church these men were prepared with the power of God to testify and to spread the gospel power to deliver a message about a man that died but at the third day he resurrected not many will do that. Not all of them were able to do that. The Bible says that nobody said Jesus is the Lord if it's not from the Holy Spirit. This man had an experience with the Jesus in a historic way. They knew scriptures, examined the scriptures because they testify about me, says God. The book of John. So simply by knowing the scriptures, they know Jesus. Because the Word of God talks about Jesus from Genesis to Revelation. The Word of God point Jesus, show Jesus, take us to Jesus. But the man will recognize the sovereignty of the Lord and accept the salvation in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And this is what missing in these two men. They lack of an experience with the Holy Spirit. To know the scriptures, the history, that Jesus was a good man, was a prophet, mighty prophet, indeed, and, and word before God. This is the way that they see Jesus. Uh, a cripple come, Jesus healed. They were hungry, Jesus multiplied the bread. Someone with a problem in their hands, that Jesus healed the hand. So the word of God comfort and bring 
refreshing to their lives and joy. Jesus was the great prophet, and this was their vision. But now, when they saw Jesus after the death, Jesus was glorified, and they could not recognize him. A victorious Jesus, the one that conquered death, the one that died for the man, but one day he resurrected, he rose again. He didn't know this Jesus. But when Jesus approached and started to talk to them, whatever was in the scriptures, the description that the Word of God gives about them, about him, and after they invite Jesus to be with them, sit at the table and breaking the bread, then they recognize who was that man. It was Jesus. And they talk to each other saying, did you, did you feel when he was talking to us in your heart? So the target, the, the, the main plan for God is to have you having an experience, to make you have an experience. You are here, you are listening to us through the online services. You need an experience with this Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that will take you to believe that Jesus is the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one that will give you strength to say no to the world and will prepare you and will adorn you it's the Holy Spirit, it's the one that will take you to desire strongly the second come of Jesus. To be in the list of members of a church, or to come every Sunday to the church, this doesn't take men to anywhere. In the first doubt, in the first sadness, or frustration with the leadership you have any any sad situation you're gonna come to Imams and you're gonna leave everything simply because you did not have a deep experience with the Holy Spirit that's why we are always touching this key have an experience with the Holy Spirit have oil in your lamp have the fire of the Holy Spirit so your heart can burn with love and so you don't deny, you don't void Jesus. So every time you, you sin, you regret and you don't be inclined to sin again so you don't be addicted to the sin. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. And the man needs to understand that. The member of a congregation needs to have that understanding. Not only to be a disciple, a follower, or part of the crowd. Not to fill the church because it's, it's better for the pictures, for the video. No. Fight so we can be an apostle. Fight so we can have a real understanding about what God is doing in your life. Pray to the Lord and tell Him, God, open my eyes and allow me to sit by your table and watch the broken of the bread and to have fellowship. Do you want to go to heaven? You need that. If you, have, if you want to have assurance that your name is in the book of life if you want to be a citizen of heaven you need to be seated at the table with the Lord our nature is the opposite right nobody wants to be at the table have a commitment when you go to the restaurant for example where you if you look for a table as far as possible right as more lonely, more hidden. Uh, can I sit there? Very far. No, it's closed already. Ah, let me be there. So that's how we are. Our culture is to be distant, to be isolated. Man 
when the scene comes, the first thing that the man did was to be distant from God. But God wants to have fellowship. Adam and Eve, they have fellowship with the Lord. Every day, God spoke to them, Adam and Eve. God manifests himself. They were friends, close friends. So the sin came, and then it was, they were isolated, distant. That's the, the human nature, to be far. As far as possible, I don't have problem with my brother, my neighbor, but it's me here and he far from me, from me. But when the Holy Spirit touches our soul and you discover this Jesus in a revealed way, why he came to the world, now you're invited to sit at the table, by the table, and God will serve you. You're going to be, you're going to be able to take from the the things that God has to offer you. The church is not only a place that you go, I have to go, I have to feel the agenda, there is so many days that I don't go. If I don't go now, they're gonna judge me. So you go more for the, the opinion. To prevent someone to judge you. Church is not, was not made for that. This environment, spiritual environment, it was made by God so you can have a connection with Him. This moment, come on, obrigado. So this is a moment, it's a unique moment in your life to serve God, to, to make a service, to make an adoration. You are in the presence of God, talking to Him. It's not any, any place, common place, but this is the house of the Father. Here we have abundance of blessings, of love, forgiveness. You are being invited to sit with the Lord by the table. Sit down and let God take care of you. God will take good care of you. He will take care of your wound, of your illness, your financials and your family, your health, here is the place for that. But for that, you need to have, you need, you gotta have an experience with the Holy Spirit. Do not come here simply f to, for the social. Come with your open heart. I'll go to the service because I wanna listen to the voice of God. I'll go to the church because I know God will speak to my soul. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit will manifest Himself. Because if Jesus come today, I'll be prepared. This is what the service to God should be. To be open for the operation of the Holy Spirit. And after everything that they experience, after everything, now they, they went back. They didn't turn, they didn't stay as a disciples, but they came back and turned into apostles. And they told everything that happened on the way and how they knew by the broken bread. You had a mission to and this responsibility, this role of yours, is to announce that Jesus is alive. May the Holy Spirit can speak to our hearts. Let's, so, let's sing one more song and ask for an experience. As these two men had, what happened to them and what happened to them after that they saw Jesus glorified tra with a transformed body.
Let's stand, brethren. Tonight the Lord has shown that He want to transform your destiny. He want to change your faith. He want to change your life. The way that you're being seen, the disciples, they will seem like a foolish. But tonight, the Lord is showing that you are blessed. We are well adventure. We are blessed because Jesus has made us this way. All you need is to open your heart and you need to accept what God has planned in your life. The Lord has shown through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has shown a couple that came tonight. They are in crisis. They had a, a very strong discussion this week. And this brought to both of them the desire to divorce, to go apart. That's it. You go your way, I go my way. But the Lord showed that tonight He is revealing clearly that this was an attack from the devil. Do not give heed to the enemy's voice. Do not absorb this deceitfulness. You, you went to the presence of God. You make a commitment to one another to have Jesus in your marital life. This is the most important. Sometimes you feel feelings, horrible feelings in the bad moments. Exchange all these feelings from, for Jesus. Let Jesus be the third one in your relationship. Amen? You're going to see how God will change things in your lives. This understanding, the Holy Spirit conducting and giving you the assurance to both of you that you can go to heaven. Amen? That's the instruction from the Lord. You have had other opportunities. The enemy came to kill, destroy, to steal. But God made the man and he established the the life together between man and woman. This is according to God's plan. What God have made, the enemy comes to destroy it. Do not let this happen. Fight for your family. Fight for your, your kids, your children. Present to them the Word of God, the Scriptures. But above all, that they have an experience with the Holy Spirit to understand and to accept God's plan in their lives. For the man to accept God's instructions only by a miracle made by the Holy Spirit. Let's close this service in prayer. Let's have one word of praise. Lord, our God, our Father, we want to glorify you. And we want to thank you for this marvelous night in your presence. We praise you as for you are our support. We shall not want anything because you have provide and your love for our lives is great we glorify you as for we are not worthy to, for your love but you paid the high price your son paid the high price at the cross for our lives we glorify you and we thank you as for we are getting together to show our gratitude and praises for all the blessings all the deliverances operated among us. This is our glorification. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of our God.
We bless your name, O Lord, and we ask you that you can receive our gratitude and praise. Confirm, O Lord, tonight our names in the book of life. Establish salvation, deliverances, healing, transformation of souls, transformation of mindsets. We ask you, Lord, that during this week, we can feel the burning of your Holy Spirit within us and keeping this fellowship with you and never look back. hold us and help us not to dismay in your presence and we never turn back and come back to the old ways allow us to be closer and closer to you this is our prayer our adoration our service that we offer you give us a victory victorious week in the name of jesus amen and in your name we say that the marvelous grace of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. The the ones that are need, in need for prayer, for assistance, give a signal with your hand, ask someone to, so we can pray with you. Uh, after the assistance, we're gonna meet the youth to you all, peace of the Lord. <laughs>